Hello everyone. This video is in continuation to our previous video where we were discussing about the plant kingdom. We had discussed till pteridophytes. In this video, we'll be starting up with gymnosperms. So I'll be starting up with the basic characteristics of gymnosperms first. I'll be starting up with the basic characteristics of gymnosperms and simultaneously I'll be explaining uh, the characteristics of pinus as well. Then uh, in further videos we'll be discussing the male and the female cone of a pinus and a detailed study of cycus which is there in our syllabus. Okay, so we'll start with the video now. Keep watching till the end because on the board you get a whole flowchart and uh, the main pointers you can note down for the, uh, them for your notes. So starting up with the characteristics of the gymnosperms. General characteristics. If we talk about gymnosperms, we all know. Generally, if we, talk, if we say gymnosperms, we all know they are the plants with naked seeds. Naked seeded plants and they are very ancient. They are very old. Most of them, they are extinct. And the ones which are present out of them mostly are found in cold regions. Example, pinus and a few are found in warm regions. Example, cycus, which we will be discussing. Both of these are in the syllabus for grade 11th. So we will be discussing both of them in detail. Then they have proper root stem and leaf system and they follow a tap root system they have an extensive tap root system and they produce spores cones you can say they produce cones and they produce spores so these are the basic general characteristics of the gymnosperms which we are doing already we have already done in our previous classes as well then I'll be talking about the four groups of these uh, of the gymnosperms. They are the first one is psychedales. Then we have conifers. Then we have gentiles, and we have gink gales out of these psychedales are cycus we'll be talking about cycus conifers is example is pinus gink gales are extinct and ginkgo gale, sorry gink gales they are living fossils Matlab, they are the most ancient type. In our syllabus, we have these two groups, Cycus and Pinus, which we'll be doing in detail. Okay, so I'll be starting up with the first, I'll just differentiate. Okay, so we'll be starting up with the Pinus first. Now, if we talk about Pinus, Pinus basically the first characteristic feature is it shows acropetal arrangement. Acropetal arrangement. If I say acropetal, what do I, what do I mean by it? Suppose this is the stem. So the arrangement of the leaves would be like this. So sorry, branches would be like this, which will give the plant a cone-like appearance. Okay. The upper branches of pinus, they are young shoots. Whereas the lower ones are the old, old shoots. Okay, so this is an acropetal arrangement with pinus follows. Then pinus basically it is spore producing. It produces spores, but it is monoecious. It is monoecious. Monoecious is where both male and female parts are present on same plant 
okay and dioecious is the one where we have different male part male plants and female plants but in pinus on the same tree male and female cones are grown so that's why they are known as monoecious they are monoecious in nature they are spore producing and they are monoecious in nature then the next characteristic or uh, the next part which we will be discussing is the stem of pinus now if we talk about the stem stem basically it's also a shoot so stem under stem we have we'll be studying one is known as the long shoot and the second one is known as the dwarf shoot if i make the diagram here so suppose this is the long shoot and from the scale long shoot has these scaly leaves present over them the leaves scale leaves we'll be discussing those and from the axil of these scale leaves arise the dwarf shoot of the plant like this okay so we'll have the dwarf shoot so this one is the long shoot and these are the dwarf shoots okay so we have if we talk about stem we have long shoot and we have the dwarf shoot there are certain characteristics long shoot it possesses ya yeah, has it have it has a terminal bud present here here it has terminal bud present which under which helps it to have unlimited growth it can show the long long shoot can show unlimited growth dwarf shoot it lacks terminal bud and it shows a limited growth so these are the characteristics of the stem this we have a long shoot and we have dwarf shoots long shoot it has a terminal bud present which helps it to have a have unlimited growth whereas the dwarf shoot it lacks a terminal bud so it has limited growth next is the different leaves now if we talk about the different leaves there are three main types of leaves scaly leaves then we have foliar leaves and we have sporophylls so we'll be discussing one by one scaly leaves i've already told you here these are the leaves present on the shoots generally present on the shoots and they help in protection they provide protection to the plant these are the scaly leaves which i have made here on the long shoot so they provide protection to the basic shoots then we have foliar leaves foliar leaves they are needle like leaves which arise in bundles on tip of dwarf shoot so if we see the diagram the foliar leaves arise here they are present at the tips of the dwarf shoot and they are they are green in color they are green in color and undergo photosynthesis okay so we have discussed two leaves scaly leaves present on the shoots provide protection foliar leaves they are needle like leaves which arise at the tip of the dwarf shoots and they are green in color undergo photosynthesis then the last type of leaf are the sporophylls sporophylls basically produce spores as the name suggests if it forms small or micro spores it is known as microsporophyllus and if it forms big spores megaspores it's known as megasporophyllus okay so these are the sporophyll leaves 
they produce spores now these sporophyll leaves will now form the cones or the strobilus cone is also known as strobilus so the male cones and female cones are formed by the sporophylls now how are these male and female cones present here the male cones are present in a cluster at the terminal shoot whereas the female cones can be present at the axil of the uh, scaly leaves and are larger in size okay the female cones they are large in size now here sporophylls they will form the male and female cones male cone at tip of long shoot in clusters female cone single at the base of scale leaves theek hai and male cones they are smaller in size whereas the female cones they are larger in size now we have one common feature among foliar and scaly leaves we have a common feature here that both of them they have sunken stomata and we all know that sunken stomata is a characteristic features of the plant to to uh, prevent the loss of transpiration or loss of water or excessive transpiration why because in these areas pinus is basically as already told it is found in the cold regions so in cold regions it can snow at times so what happens they have to store water in them they cannot have undergo uh, they cannot undergo excessive transpiration for that reason the foliar leaves and the scaly leaves both have sunken stomata also the foliar leaves they are needle like their surface area is very small so there is less transpiration this is an additional fact to it so in this video we have discussed the general characteristics of the gymnosperms we have discussed their groups and then we have started with pinus we have done the characteristics of the pinus in detail in our next video we'll be discussing about the male cones and the female cones we'll be uh, making the proper diagrams of the male cones and the pollens which are formed and in female cone also we'll be discussing how the female cones are formed and how fertilization occurs so this is it uh, for this video keep watching sharing liking subscribing thank you